Hmm. Yeah, so first of all, it's lovely to be here. It's my first time performing here with uh, Christian Fenz in, 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 in Slovenia. Um, tonight we shall perform here in the cinema. It's a lovely big screen. So we're going to utilize the screen to the fullest. And we just make one big improvisation. It's like a big um, like a big dialogue between the two of us of image and sound. We've done it quite often before, so we know roughly what to expect from each other. But there's a lot of surprises for ourselves and one-way streets and ghettos that we have to get out of and hopefully lots of ecstatic pinnacles. That's what we hope for. I'd like to say it's all very spontaneous, but of course when you've done this for so many years and hundreds of times, it's the only way to remain spontaneous is by sabotaging yourself and um, causing yourself great difficulties, which can be very interesting and leads to good results, um, usually. Um, I, I have an image bank with me, I've got all of this, 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 these video clips from my research over the years and my archive and all this, but also recently I've been doing a lot of projects like opera projects, which, um, which, which, which create a lot of excess material, material which will never be seen by the opera audience, but I'll chop it up into little fragments and I'll take it along with me in my suitcase for the next shows with, with for example, with Venice. Hmm. Well, that's, that's lots of questions and lots of loaded questions. Um, mm, I've been doing this for s such a long time, I guess, that I stopped um, watching all too many other performances. That sounds terribly arrogant, but it is just what happens, that then you're on tour and you look in and you think like, oh, I've sort of seen this before, <laughs> it's the same thing. So, of course, I'm always looking for surprises. I, always, I try to look at every performance at a festival, and I like to be surprised. Um, I do wish that I was being surprised more, and I do wish that I was being pushed more to question, what the hell is this? Uh, I, it's the same in music, though, I have to admit. I do wish that there was a moment in music now that I would be so shocked by what I'm hearing, and I would say, that's just not music. Maybe a little bit like our parents thought about when they heard punk for the first time. They thought, what the hell is this? Why would anybody buy this record? It's not music. And like now we just have all these nice developments it's going on, chugging along nicely with new developments. But I'm not really being shocked. I'm not really being pushed off my pedestal. But um, what I have, I'm interested in is, for example, the demise of MTV has caused music video to become much more interesting. So I was actually making music videos many, many years ago. I didn't enjoy doing it because I didn't enjoy the people I was working with. So I quit. Um, and then, well, you couldn't even watch MTV the last couple of years because I don't think they had any music videos anymore. It was more like shows of couples being dismissed or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now I see, of course, um, it's lovely to see a, lo a whole new subculture of music video coming up. Of course, maybe it's online. It's not on national TV. It's not on cable. That's what online is there for. But there's a lot of new, there's architecture music videos, there's fashion music videos, there's very weird music videos coming from, from after the Arabian Spring. There's a lot of new stuff coming, which I find really, I find that more fascinating, I have to admit, than to check out what a lot of my colleagues are doing in their new collaborations. That's not surprising me as much as I hoped it would. I hope that answers some of the questions that you just said. Um, hmm. well, you, first you said I was optimistic. Uh, if I might remind you, this is quite funny, because when we met first, it was in Zagreb, basically, I think it was 10 years ago. Yes. And, um, and I, I remember the things that I'd said in this lecture that you also questioned me about. I was being quite pessimistic about Photoshop plugins causing everything all around the world to be identical, and I remember you stood up and questioned that, and we had a chat about it. And I suppose since then I've got a lot more optimistic, but not only because things around me have changed, but because I've also changed. I've traveled since then so much more and found myself to be quite arrogant to think that I'd already seen everything and knew how everything was. So, so in that sense, I am optimistic. I mean, also, I've, I've, I've expanded or... or got distracted, however we want to define it, by doing other things. So now I'm spending a lot of time in Central Asia. I'm spending a lot of time in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, for a completely different reason, a media festival that's happening there. And so I'm seeing what people there are doing um, without any kind of MTV background or any kind of, you know, Berlin, Detroit club background. They're just making their own stuff and it's so can be so surprisingly beautiful. And you know, I'm discovering things there. People, for example, who studied classical music in Moscow, who are now playing sonakis, but with video by somebody who actually does documentary movies in Kyrgyzstan, and the results are so much more surprising than what I'm seeing on festivals in Berlin or Barcelona or, or New York. So that, that makes me very optimistic. Your other question was about the the, the topic of this festival, and um, well, no, at, at the 
the danger of sounding arrogant and again I find it so difficult to connect myself to any <laughs> trends or what's happening and that doesn't mean that I think they're all bad or good it's just maybe I'm a bit lazy to find out about them I've always been fascinated by science and I wanted to study science. Science was actually what I wanted to do till I discovered probably I'd spend my whole life in laboratories typing in numbers of results of tests and I thought it was boring and then I decided to make art. But science has always been a great love of mine so most of the videos that I will show tonight are results and documentations of little scientific experiments that I've made in my laboratory. My laboratory also doubles as my bathroom. It's what of just making things, setting things on fire, burning them, melting them, growing them, crystals, everything. As you know, when we met first, I was still involved in the project Rechenzentrum, which was based on sampling everything. We made nothing ourselves. The idea was to sample everything. Um, and after 10 years of doing that, I found I'd taken that as far as I could. I thought I probably could do this until the end of my life, but I wasn't surprising myself anymore. So I flipped completely and now I don't use any um, external material. All material is filmed by myself and manipulated and drawn and redrawn and printed and everything because um, I wanted to change that. So in that way I'm fascinated by science. What I do could not be done without technology. I, mean, I was reading recently this whole lovely book by Gene Youngblood, um, Expanded Cinema, a, a bible of, of uh, this stuff from the 70s, where he's talking about the various forms of interaction of a human and a computer. In the first form, the computer is just a, a tool, like a chisel, like a hammer, and in the very last one, the computer makes all the decisions, and we are just a passive bystander, and the computer doesn't even care whether we're watching or not. <laughs> They're the two extremes, and he lists six, or defines six in-between stadia of, of interaction. And probably, to my shame, I've to admit that what I'm doing here is the first one. The computer is basically a chisel. <laughs> it's making so much more possible. I could never do what I'm going to do tonight 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, probably even three years ago. I couldn't do it. So that's fantastic. But I'm not letting the computer make any decisions for me. I would set in some a, a little bit of random just to surprise myself. If I like it, then I go with that. But I've, I'm, not a, I'm not into programming. I don't program things. I don't really believe in Lev Manovich's idea that the new avant-garde is the archive and how information gets sorted and that Google today is what Jika Vertov was 100 years ago. I don't really be It's a funny, it's a thought-provoking idea and we're talking about it, or I'm talking about it, but I don't really believe it.